All right, coming up, he is the star of one of the biggest movie franchises ever. Are you afraid? But this is totally different, my friends. People still shoot at presidents. Robert Pattinson, about his work with a Canadian master, and where his head's at now that the end of Twilight is near. Yeah, I'm not clever. <laughs> So, in the Twilight movies, as we all know, Robert Pattinson plays a blood-sucking vampire. Now, there are those who might say his character in Cosmopolis, a billionaire Wall Street trader, not that different. There's a poem I read in which a rat becomes the unit of currency. That would be interesting. Yeah, that would impact the world economy. But Cosmopolis is a very different film from Twilight, and it gives Robert the chance to unleash a different kind of dark stuff on screen. Stuff we haven't seen before in that Twilight saga, which, as we all know, one of the top grossing franchises ever, and it made him an international star. Nor did you see it in the fourth Harry Potter movie, which, despite its enormous success, it didn't lead to bigger things for Robert right away. So he was just in L.A. going to auditions and playing music, guitar and piano, when he landed the role that changed his life big time. I've never wanted a human's blood so much in my life. But now that the end is nigh for Twilight, what will the next act for Robert look like? With Cosmopolis, he's throwing himself down some pretty deep chasms. We know what the anarchists have always said. The urge to destroy is a creative urge. Cronenberg clearly liked what he saw. You want to get to the edges of what you can do. And uh, certainly, this is a very edgy Rob Pattinson we see in this movie. Sex. Yes. He casts Robert in an upcoming film as well and calls him a profound actor. Please welcome Robert Pattinson. How are you? I'm okay. I'm all a bit discombobulated for some reason. I hate coming on after David. I know everyone's watching in the green room as well. It's making me nervous. Why? Because because he because he knows what he's doing up here. Yeah, literally, he seems all smooth and stuff. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, you're not supposed to be an actor. <laughs> <laughs> David was mentioning that you were, you know, post Twilight franchise. You're trying to go down different roads. Is that is this legitimately part of your your planning? This was not part of the plan at all. I thought I was totally oversaturated everywhere. I wanted to do little tiny parts, or maybe no parts at all. Um, I, I got this three weeks before uh, I was finishing the last Twilight movie, and I was really, really determined to find ensemble pieces or anything small, just so I didn't have to be in everybody's face and annoying everyone. Um, and then this thing came up, and uh, yeah, it's almost like a obnoxiously present Eric is in every single yeah. second of it and incessantly speaking um, but uh, it's uh, I think this was it was a pretty difficult thing to turn down is this a, a new experience for you though to, to watch a film back and go oh wait a minute how do I how do I promote this movie oh completely I mean it reminded me that there was this thing which um, uh, I watched this interview with Ryan Gosling once and he said about uh, when he did the believer like a few years ago and then people were saying because he'd done Young Hercules for like three or four seasons or something. And then he did The Believer and everybody's asking about his craft. Mm. And like you just, it's the most confusing thing. Like I was in Cannes doing these interviews. I mean, I, always, I was really fighting to not look pretentious for years. And then someone gives you one inch of <laughs> like kind of the possibility of being pretentious. And I was like grabbing it so hard and just <laughs> going around being the biggest douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and now I've kind of I've reined it in again. Wait, if you think, too, it's... I mean, being in a Harry Potter movie, you think your career is going to hit, right? That's the thing, and it didn't hit right away after that. In that moment, did you think, I'm on it, like, here goes my career? Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of... I didn't really intend to be an actor. I mean, I, I kind of got that by... I, I got this film called Vanity Fair, which I got cut from, and uh, spent a little while telling everybody, like, oh, I've got this big part, I'm playing Reese Witherspoon's son. Um, just before and everyone found out that I was cut from it. Hey, let's play that scene. Here's the scene. <laughs> no way. Can I help you? <laughs> okay. I'm not sure you'll want to when you learn who I am. I know who you are. <laughs> Why have you come? To see my son. There's your moment, bud. <laughs> making performance. <laughs> <laughs> but suddenly, Vanity Fair's DVD sales through the roof are on Netflix oh, really? now that they see that, that you're in funny. there. Uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I threw up immediately after that moment. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most nervous. Yeah, I mean, but I kind of got... The casting director was the same casting director for Harry Potter. And then uh, I got invited to the premiere of that, and they didn't tell me I was cut out, so I was kind of wow. sitting there. And so the casting director felt so guilty, she brought me in for the Harry Potter role. Um, and and then that's what got Hardwick's attention, which for Twilight, right? What did Catherine see? I don't know. Catherine called me up when I was in London, and uh, 
I hadn't read the script or read the book. And she started talking to me, going, going like, yeah, so what do you think? And I think it was about 3 o'clock in the morning, and I was going, like, oh, man, he's just an animal. He's an animal. And I didn't see that I hadn't even read it. But it was just like, he's just, he's a sex machine. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, and I think Catherine, like, Catherine liked that. But um, <laughs> I don't know what I was talking about. How do you, well, what do you make of everything that's happened, though? Because it's become... Uh, I mean, there was a time when there were a lot of huge stars, but you have a different kind of mania around you that I haven't seen in a long time. How, what's it like on the inside? Uh, it's, uh, I don't know. I mean, there's a, you have a, you're completely um, disconnected from your, your uh, kind of doppelganger, <laughs> I think. I mean, I'm, I just don't think I'm confident enough to really claim, you know, because you can really, if you really claim it, you can have like, obscene power over people. Um, but yeah, then you have to, it, it, it does come with a kind of responsibility, so I've just tried to avoid the responsibility of it completely and just say, like, oh yeah, that guy, that, he's another guy. <laughs> like, like, I can do what I want still. Uh, the one thing that, that I, I imagine you're, you're, you're dealing with is, aside from your close circle of friends, actual humanity, actual human conversations, the connection that you, we all crave as a, as a person mm. is harder and harder for you to find, isn't it? Yeah, but I just remember, I think I was pretty similar before. I mean, I would kind of, I'd be like one of those people who's desperate to go to a party, but then they go to the party and then they just stand in the corner with the, with the people they came with and <laughs> refuse to acknowledge that anyone else is there. Um, yeah, so I don't know, I don't really, I don't really miss anything. And also, you kind of, you know, you think, you have all these kind of fantasies that, Oh, if I wasn't famous, I'd meet all these random people in the street all the time. But you don't, you don't meet random people in the street. I mean, most of the time you're trying to avoid everybody, even if you're not famous. <laughs> I'm going to play a clip here. I'm going to see you. Tell me what you think of this singer songwriter and give you an update of what's happening. I mean, I know when people talk to her, they ask her about you, but I'm curious about her as, as a performer. Did you co-write that song? Did you help her write that song? That's what I heard. The rumor was that you were part of the writing of some of her music with her. Um, yeah, kind of. Like, I, I did very, very little. Though. <laughs> just kind of, I, just, I think I just played guitar. But I've written some other stuff with her, though. We just have, we had the craziest differing opinion on, on pop music. Like, it's ridiculous. Because she'll, she'll, I, I want to kind of, I want to get lost every single time. And, uh, and she's one of the people who, you know, when they go to a concert, they, uh, they want to hear it like it is on the CD. Right. And I'm the opposite. <laughs> so that we get into huge arguments the whole time. You want to be called jazz on? Is that what you wanted to talk about? Yeah, I, I had this argument with Adele, which is probably the most like, ridiculous thing I've ever said. I was like, you know, you can really like, just reach for it. And she's just like, like you do realize I'm, <laughs> I'm like the biggest selling female artist ever. And I just like, for some reason, decided to get her into an argument with her about it. But, um, but, well, uh, how does that happen? Two o'clock in the morning somewhere and you're yeah. just the end? Like, let's have, yeah, that's and then amazing. waking up kind of really, really regretting every, every word I said. <laughs> has anybody come up to you, though, and said at two in the morning, listen, you could have this kind of career if you just did this? No, 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 no. <laughs> They're just like, you know, people, I think people are sort of consistently surprised at the fact that I'm still around. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fluke. Do you, think much about, do, do you think much about the fact, though, that when this franchise goes away, um, that you need that second act of your career? Do you think about that? I mean, the only thing I ever thought about was thinking, I don't want anyone to think that I, that I somehow got trapped by something. You know, and I don't know if anyone really does, the general public, about Twilight and everything. But, I mean, the amount of times you get asked, like, oh, do you, are you worried about getting typecast, blah, blah, blah. I'm just worried about um, people saying, like, what happened to that guy? Like, I mean, you know, and, and also, you know, you think you, you want to you do something at least a little bit worthwhile with what kind of power you've been given um, through luck. <laughs> and... Uh, and not just chase after, not just keep trying to extend the same thing for as long as possible. I'm not very scared of it going away um, at all. 
Uh, so, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, if I could, if I could somehow maintain a career which I could keep making movies like Cosmopolis, yeah. then I think it'd be amazing. Because because not very many of them are, are made. No, so. it's also timely. Like you get to play with a character um, that most people don't get to play with. You get to act in a great scene with Paul Giamatti. Like that scene, it's a 20-minute scene, mm -hmm. and that's it's a pretty intense moment. Like that sort of stuff, uh, actors don't get that opportunity too often. No, not at all. This I was saying earlier. This is like. If I read the script and David wasn't attached to it, this is the kind of script which you'd read and think, like, wow, this is amazing, but this is never going to get made, ever. Um, because everything like that is never made. You see anything which is slightly different, you know it's never going to get made. You know, I always thought after The Dark Knight, for instance, like, it makes tons and tons of money, and Heath's doing something which is just, like, it's, it's, it's outside. It's still perfectly, like, people understand what he's doing. It's not like he's doing something totally crazy. Right. But, uh... It's slightly outside the box of people's, what people are usually used to seeing. And I really thought that was going to change everything about the, how big budget movies are made. But it didn't. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, and so, I don't know, it keep, if every single actor wasn't afraid of, of trying to do um, you know, something, something slightly abstract and, and you know, not concerned about m their movie making tons and tons of money, then eventually the industry would change. But I mean, you and other guys in your position, can you make these kinds of films then? Not just as actors. I think you can once. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many other times. <laughs> I'm desperately trying to get a superhero movie now. Are you really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, congratulations on Cosmopolis. It's a hell of a performance, man. Well, thanks a lot. Really good to see you. Robert Pattinson, nice everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.